Hey guys, what's up? It's me Omar from BuyMeAnIPhone.com and today I have a really awesome review lined up for you. Now this is a product that was sent to me for review by Kenwood and it is the Kenwood KIV 700 series digital media receiver and it's basically like a head unit for your vehicle, like a car stereo. And so I've actually never had a chance to review this type of product before. So I've been testing it out for a while now and I think I, I feel like I'm finally ready to show it to you guys. So let's go ahead and jump over to my vehicle. I'm gonna give you guys a close up uh, demonstration of how it actually works and basically tell you about how my experience has been using the KIV 700 series uh, receiver from Kenwood. So let's go ahead and switch over to close up camera and let's do that now. Hey. All right guys, we're inside my vehicle right now and I'm gonna give you guys a demonstration of the KIV 700 uh, series digital media receiver from Kenwood here. So as you can see, real sleek looking head unit, not too many buttons, it's pretty simplistic looking and the reason for that is because it only has 10 buttons, there's actually only 10 different options here, but some of these buttons have multiple uh, functions as well, so let's go ahead and go through them really quick. We have our source button here, this is the one that you'd press and this is what allows you to scroll through standby using the internal memory, using the flash drive, USB flash drive, uh, tuner which is radio and also when you plug in your iPod or iPhone, another option will show up and it'll say iPod in there. So. That's what that is right there. You press the center button, that's the selection button right there. And as I just showed you, you would scroll through this. This is what you actually use this to control the volume, but you actually use this knob right here to scroll through menus as well. Our, our uh, play forward, uh, reverse and forward buttons here for playback. Our pause and play button right here. Menu button, which will scroll through all the different menus. And this is what you would use uh, the roll in here to scroll through those. You can also page down and page up. Well, not in this option right here, but when you're searching through your music, you can. So the, here, this button here is the dis display button, and this button is the play mode button. But like I said, they also use as they also function as scroll buttons as well. So we have ten buttons here. This also comes with a three-inch TFT screen. It's three twenty by two forty is the resolution on here, and uh, you can actually watch your videos off of your iPhone or iPod onto the screen. Of course, you can only do this when you're parked. So, and I honestly didn't really use this function that much. Um, the screen is really tiny, and then. To be quite honest, I'd rather watch the videos. I mean, let's be honest here. The the iPhone screen is larger than the uh, the screen on here, so I could just watch the videos on my iPhone and be just the same. But the really cool fe feature about this is in the back of this is actually uh, audio video cable outputs. So if you have um, monitors in your vehicle, whether it's a van or an SUV, whatever it is, a vehicle, if you have other screens like on the headrests, you can actually plug your iPod or iPhone into here, watch your video, and it'll output that onto those screens in the back of your vehicle, which is awesome. So if that's the case, you don't have to be in park. You can watch those videos from your iPhone, your iPod. So you don't have to have a DVD player or anything like that set up. You can just use an iPod or an iPhone. So that's a really cool feature. I really like that a lot. So um, this also has built-in 512 megabytes of internal flash memory. Now, the only way you can get uh, music, pictures, those types of things onto this device is if you use the USB drive. So on the back of this unit here is a USB, okay? And you can either have your iPhone or 30-pin uh, connector which is right here. You can either have this plugged into the USB or you can have that, actually have a USB flash drive connection cable, like an extension cable that comes out the back, which you would use to pl plug in a flash drive into here. But the cool thing about it is there is one plug in the back, but it does work with USB hubs. So if you say you have a three port USB hub, you can plug that into the back on in the back of this USB. Plug, plug, use one of those uh, open openings ports for your iPhone 30 pin connector. And you have two open accessible ports for two additional flash drives. So you can have two flash drives in an iPhone or an iPod plugged into this unit at the same time. And with that, you can use the flash drives to store music, store pictures onto here as well as using your iPhone. Okay guys, so let's geek out a little bit here and, and talk about some of the real detailed specs. I'm not gonna get too into this because this head unit is a professional head unit, okay? Keep in mind that there are many, many options and things that I'm not even gonna go into that uh, for, the, for, the, for those of you that have a really awesome banging car system, you're gonna want to use uh, all the different functions and settings that you can utilize with this. But I'm just gonna talk about a few of them. So basically this has 22 watts per channel, per four channels, maxim, maxing now at 50 watts. And there's an amplifier built into here. You can customize the sound with the three band, um, three band parametric EQ with eight presets. So there's lots of different options and things that you can use here to get a full set of sound shaping tools. Whether you're, uh, it also features the highway driving as well. So when you're in the highway, or if it, it can tell that the background noise is getting louder, it will automatically raise up the volume for you. And it has a slew of different options and tweaks that you can make to make this thing sound awesome with your sound system in your vehicle, whether you're using subwoofers or anything like that. And so the DSP feature settings for the car, you can, you can adjust based on the car type, speaker size, digital time alignment, uh, front and rear high, high pass, uh, crossovers, all these types of things. So if you do have a system in your car, this is the perfect head unit for you. Okay guys, so now let me go ahead and give you a demonstration of how this works with your iPhone, okay? So I'm gonna take the uh, 30 pin connector here that comes in the vehicle. 
basically plug that into the bottom right here. As soon as you plug it in, it's automatically going to switch to iPod, and it's going to actually start playing the music right away. So you see it's tagging my store, store, uh, tag storing, so it's uh, automatically, if there's any songs I've uh, been listening to on the radio that I want to tag on my device, I can do the tagging, and it'll transfer those tags to my iPhone. So next time I connect to iTunes, it'll ask me if I want to purchase that music. So it does uh, offer that capability as well. So when I have my uh, thing here plugged in, I think it's... Yeah, so it's already playing music right now. So let's put this iPhone. What you basically do is ideally you would plug your iPhone in and then you just put it away. Took it out of the way. You don't want to mess with it. Now you can use the controls in here to play on playback all the music that's off of your iPhone or iPod Touch or iPod, any iPod as well, actually. So here we have the display here. You can scroll through the different displays. And right now it's showing one of the albums that are on my, my phone right now that's actually playing off of there. And you can, there's three different uh, views. So you can do this view. The smaller view with the, and then the whole album art right there. So let's go ahead and switch to music. And let's say I want to look for a song by Beauty. And well, if I'm driving, I don't have too much time to be messing with controls or switching through, or scrolling, using the, the, the scroll wheel here and scrolling through all these different things. So what you can do is you can do a search mode and you can do alphabetical search like that. So once I have alphabetical search, I can scroll through. If I'm looking for Beauty, and I want to scroll straight to B. Here we go. Bam, hit that right there. And I'm in my out. I want to go through all albums. Oops, wrong one. Let's back up a little bit. And the menu button also acts as the back button here. There we go. So it starts at the B. I, I actually selected that by accident. So I, it'll take me straight to my Bs. If I want to listen to Beauty and I hit that one, All Albums, let's just go to All Albums. And let's just start with this one right here. Play it. So it's actually playing the music straight there from there. And I didn't have to touch the iPod at all or my iPhone at all. So we can let it back down. Now the really cool thing about this is if you don't like the way this system works, if you don't like the way the menu system is to searching through music, which I will admit takes some time to get used to, you can always go here to the options. Let me go straight to the home screen. You can always go to the settings. Oops, wrong one. Play mode. If you go to play mode right there, you can change it to iPod by hand. You select that option right there. Now it disengages all these different searches, search, uh, those uh, different options that you have right there. And if you want to just use your iPhone, you can actually go to the, the iPod right here, and you can scroll through your songs really easily. So let's say it's just you just don't like the way the system menu, the menu system works. Now I can control it from here. But whenever this option is turned off, see like I, if I want to switch over to, let's say I want to hear another different Beauty and song, well I get up there. So it's playing off of the right there. If I don't want to use my iPhone and I want to go back to this, as soon as you switch the, the option back off, accessory connected, so it will not allow you to uh, to uh, use the controls on the iPhone anymore. So you have to use it the head unit right here. So I'm kind of glad I offered that because when I initially was using it, it took some time to get used to. But after I really got used to the menu system and the way it's searching, and once I got that down, I kind of favor the searching through the uh, the head unit rather than the phone because at the same time, I'm sure in some places, especially where you guys are at, it's uh, kind of illegal. You can get a ticket if, you, if people see you, if the cops see you using your iPhone or, uh, or your phone while you're driving. So they, for in, my, in our area, it's uh, you can get a ticket for text messaging. So the cops are not going to know whether I'm text messaging or I'm scrolling through my songs on my iPhone. So I basically keep my iPhone out of my hands now, and I just use the head, the head unit here, the receiver, to go through all my songs. And so... That's called, those are some of the different functions right there. Let's talk about some different ways you can customize your head in here. So as you guys can see, right now it's pink, right? The color on here, I'm, hopefully that shows up on camera. Let's say you are one of the guys that have your, your car is totally tweaked out with all sorts of custom, custom uh, pieces that you have in your vehicle. Maybe you have custom lighting. So you want your head unit to match, let's say, your green lighting that you have in your vehicle. So all you have to do is go in here into settings. Let's find it in this display and illumination. You can actually adjust the key color of this to go along with your car. So let's see right now. It's right now it's yellow. It's going towards like a teal, blue, goes straight to variable scan, color one, red, purple. So you can keep scrolling through it until you get to, I think I already passed the green up actually. And that's, a, that's kind of a, oh, that's yellow. That's a green right there. So there's a green. So if you have green lights inside your vehicle and you want this to be matching that, hopefully that comes up on camera. I'm not sure if it is. Uh, probably better to see if it was nighttime. But so all of the different colors are green. But the, one of the cool things about this is you can also have the uh, illuminated effect. Actually, not, not it. Let me see here. There it is, sync. So if you kind of want it to be a little flashy, now you got a little, looks like you have a little uh, disco style here. So it's actually matching 
the jumping of the colors with the music that you're listening to. So right now it's just it's just like a, a strobe almost is is it's synced up with the music. A little distracting, but still a really a cool feature that you can put onto there. Just one of the extra options that make this head unit really fully customizable, not only with sound, but also with the way it actually physically looks on the front of it here. Okay, guys, and here's one of the really cool features about this head unit. Now, this isn't exactly a feature, and it's, it's not exactly something that it's meant to do, but it is able to do is you can stream Pandora using the 30-pin connector. So if you pop it up on the bottom of here, what's going to happen is it's going to automatically start to play your iPod, which I don't want to do, so I'm going to pause that. If you go to uh, Pandora, Pandora is going to load, load up right here. There you go. Now it's playing. So right now it's playing off of my Pandora music. So if I want to listen to Pandora while I'm driving in traffic, which I actually did a lot, you're actually able to do that. Downside about that is, is that the head unit is not made to work with Pandora you know, out of the box. It is something that can, you can kind of get it to do, but you can't control any of the, the, fu the playback function or any of that kind of stuff with the, head, with the receiver here. So that's something I would really like to see added to this. That would be an awesome feature is to be able to control Pandora, be able to scroll through your playlist or you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, and skip over to the next song, that type of thing. I think that'd be a really nice feature to add to here. So, guys, overall, the KIV 700 series is a really awesome head unit here, a really awesome receiver. Keep in mind that there are some things that you could add to it. There's actually a KIV BT900, which is about $100 more than this. This one retails for about $300. The KIV BT900 retails for $400. And the only difference between those two of those is BT has Bluetooth built into it. So that can actually stream Bluetooth wireless. You can stream music wirelessly from your device to the head unit here. And you can also use it for making phone calls as well. And the other things that you might want to add to this that you are able to add is HD radio, satellite radio. You can also have uh, an adapter here that will work with your steering wheel. So if you have steering wheel controls, you can actually control the volume and that type of thing from your steering wheel uh, from the receiver here. That's not something that's actually built into it. So that's kind of a bummer. I've been, I'm, I'm used to using my steering wheel controls, but uh, ever since having this on here, I can't do that anymore. So, um, like I said, you can get this for three hundred dollars. It's around three hundred dollars, which is you know pretty much average price for most uh, receivers of this quality and this caliber, with all the different options that this thing can do. Keep in mind, guys, though, that the one some of the cons I don't like about this is that this does not feature a CD player. There is no CD slot anywhere on here. So, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really even. I, I actually have my CD sleeve. It's probably in my car right now. I haven't popped a CD into my my regular factory system that was in here before. I haven't used that in like years. I literally have not even opened it up. I've always just streamed music off of my iPhone using the FM transmitter or auxiliary in. So this head unit does not even allow you the ability to use CDs, which may be bad for some. It may, for others, it may not be a big deal. Like for me, it didn't even matter. I didn't even care. One thing to keep in mind though, the other thing is this faceplate is not removable. It is fixed. So if you have a vehicle or if you live in an area where you, that kind of worries you and there's maybe a lot of theft with head units being stolen uh, from stereos being stolen out of the cars, that's something you're going to have to contend with. You cannot pull this out and like hide it or make them think that it's not going to be functional. This is always going to be just like this. So you may want to add a little extra tension in your vehicle. Or, you know, for me, I'm not too worried about it. I, I don't think the average person just looking in the car is going to notice it and think it's anything really special. Little, you know, little do they, do they know how many features and how, many, how awesome this head unit is. But um, that's just one thing to keep in mind. So this is not a removable face. The other thing is that even though it does include the 30-pin connector here for the iPhone and the iPod, it is a very short connector. I'm actually using, here's the actual connector right here on the bottom. I'm actually using a, uh, what is this, a cable jive extension so that I can reach it. Because if I don't have this on here, just the way from my, where my vehicle is and where the, the plug is coming out from, I have to reach really far if it, the iPhone is plugged into this part here. So I have to use an adapter. So I, wish, I kind of wish the cable was a little bit longer. Not a big deal, and depending on the vehicle, it may not be an issue at all with you guys. So, besides that, guys, the hanging is really awesome. The only other negative I would say is it does take some time to get used to some of the controls and some of the functions. Like I showed you earlier, you're gonna have to sit in your vehicle for a while and just really tinker with it and get it down to where you can search through your music and you can, you know, d utilize the different search modes and all those types of things without having to look at your car. And, and keep in mind, you know, you are driving, so <laughs> you don't want to just sit there and learn it as you go because you're gonna be distracted big time. So the controls do, do take some time to get used to, but once you get used to them, they're real intuitive and they make a lot of sense. So that's it for me today, guys. If you own this uh, head unit yourself, this receiver, why don't you post a comment below and tell us how your experience has been with it. I really enjoyed using this, and i really uh, like to thank Kenwood for sending this out to me for review. Uh, I really like it, and I, I intend to keep it in my vehicle and using it for a, a very long time. So that's going to be it for me today, guys. I'll see you guys in the next video review. Till next time.